Welcome to another video right here on FD Builds. It's so good to be with you once again. And I quickly want to do a short video on what I use personally for uh, recovery gear and also for uh, fixing vehicles in times when it's really, really needed. And I've managed to fix this vehicle with that tool. I've managed to fix that one. I've managed to fix six other vehicles um, from different family members when they break down. And uh, I'm just missing one of the most important ones, which is my battery jump start uh, tool, which is a good brand that I would recommend because uh, it really works. We were at a function and three or four vehicles didn't start after that. I think people were playing music from their cars and chilling next to their cars. And then, yeah, this one, uh, battery thing uh jumped every vehicle and still has power i think it had like 70 percent left after jumping three or four vehicles and it was so easy to use i didn't even do the jumping of the vehicles the the ladies just borrowed it from me and went to uh help with the vehicles and then brought it back and then i left it in pretoria with a family member who really needs it in case they break down and I'm going to be flying down soon to drive back some of their cars. So let's begin. We're going to begin by um, looking at the spanners that uh, I carry. And uh, I found these to be the most essential. So I'll quickly unpack them just onto the mat in the back of the Jimny. And uh, the nice thing about them is they fit in a Jimny. Okay, so I'm going to try and explain here what I've got. I've got this spade, which I'll show you a bit later because I need three hands, one to hold the camera, uh, two to open this up and to show you what's actually, what actually comes in here. I was quite impressed with this. I didn't expect it to be that good, but let's just start with this. Why do I have two big spanners over here? If you're traveling a really long distance and you hit a puddle and you knock your alignment out, it's not hard to fix your alignment. You just need these two. I believe these are the sizes you need, 21 and 24 for Suzuki Jimny. I also have these spanners over here. It's a Mastercraft set. And uh, the nice thing about these spanners, as opposed to the older type ones, it's a ratcheting spanner set. So you don't have to take off the spanner off the bolt every time, reset it and then put it back on. You just, you just work it. So let me show you how that looks at the end over there and with these I've noticed you can reach everywhere it's a Mastercraft they're quite expensive but uh, I got mine on a discount so I was quite happy I paid uh, for this whole set I paid the price that you would pay normally for one spanner so yeah I was quite happy with that this is very important I've used this as you can see they're nice and dirty the last year I've used this on at least eight vehicles. One of my friends that I go RCing with uh, promotes these products and uh, he gave me one of these but I've got actually some three or four big bottles here in the garage but I carry this with me in the Jimny just in case I need it on the go. This over here is something I bought from Mac, Mac Africa and I have this in all my cars because it's actually a quality set and sometimes you need that odd screwdriver that doesn't work plus some other tools including a sim card remover this includes everything obviously some have come out of their place because i've been driving uh, on a lot of rough roads i haven't actually cleaned the car because we're going out again tomorrow but this one tool you can use to take off all the panels this other tool over here very useful there's a screwdriver head. There's also a small spanner, ratchet kind of thing that comes in it. There's uh, a spanner piece that goes on the screwdriver so you can work around corners. It's got like a spring type of thing, as you can see. There's also these small picks over here that are very nice when you're picking small bolts off where they're supposed to be. That comes in handy with someone like me also carries RCs and uh, I want to fix them on the go. If you don't carry them, you don't need them. Um, over here, you, you can see the tool, the SIM card tool, 
in case you you've just crossed over the border into another country it's happened to me many times we have crossed over and i've carried every single tool except for that very important and uh it even allows you to take it out and clip it onto the window so you remember at the border here's some extra tools i just put in here these two are not necessarily needed uh for your purposes uh, i i've worked on many places including buildings so you know and putting self-tapping screws in with the drill always good to have these on hand that's another piece that comes with it it's a smaller uh, one of those plastic removers you can remove these panels that come on the side you see uh to get those clips out and um yeah on the screwdriver set it's quite intensive you've got almost everything you need in terms of screwdrivers when it comes to the electronics and i've used this in the chimney i've used it in that vehicle on that side and i've also used it on a white version of that vehicle i've used it on a discovery and i think my friend also borrowed it to use it on a hilux so it works and uh yeah after he borrowed it he's also bought one over here <laughs> as the name says fuses but it's not just one fuse it's a couple of every single fuse and you might say i'm ocd by having this um but then i'm not only thinking about fuses blowing in my car um, i'm thinking of fuses blowing in other cars because uh most of the time this, the fuses are standardized and the sizes are similar and i found uh, when traveling with family in a convoy i've been able to take out of this back here and uh, replace a fuse that blows in another vehicle of another brand from suzuki so there's different uh, amps of fuses in here i believe there's three of each of all the fuses you need and i'll just close this up quickly and then my most these are these are my favorite i i, I love these cable ties i once made a comment in one of the jimny groups that you know cable ties are like very important and i wasn't just talking um i've been through situations where we've used cable ties to fix the vehicle to get back to base and um <clears throat> and they work for any application anything you need to do on the vehicle itself or if you need to work on something else wherever you are or if you need to just quickly strap something down cable ties very very important and uh that brings us to this piece over here many people will have this already in their toolbox that they carry in their car but if you don't um it's good to have a decent cutter, especially if you're carrying cable ties. So this, I normally just put in the pouch with the cable ties. And basically all this fits in this small uh, box at the back here of the chimney. Plus there's more stuff in there, just stuff that you don't need. Um, if you carry spare fuel, don't forget to carry one of these. No point carrying 40 to 80 liters of fuel if you don't have this. Otherwise, you're going to have to start cutting coke bottles and balancing in terms of how to get that fuel into your car. Um, I've never been a fan of the stock standard uh, spanner that comes with the vehicle. Obviously, they try to keep costs cheap and uh, costs as low as possible. And keep it as affordable as possible. As affordable as possible. So they give you a spanner that's very small. Uh, but I found this works well. I would highly recommend getting a torque wrench that uh, on opening it locks so you can open any bolt but then on tightening you can torque down the bolt to the torque setting you need and I've got a 19 uh, piece over here is not by chance it's because um, when you put back the tires you need to torque it if you have to change a tire and you put it back you have to torque it to a certain, a certain torque spec and it's always nice when you get it right on the go I mean, why fix it out on the road and then have to go to the, the lodge or the campsite where you're going and then have to torque it down again and check it again? Why not just fix it once off? And this, I've changed 12 tires in the space of six months. 
and it's quick quick it's so much faster than using that small spanner that comes in there by the way if you've lifted your chimney you're going to need a different jack don't use the jack that comes in the chimney unless you're going to jack on certain points uh on the axles that are lower than the other points of the car um but if you've got a lifted chimney chances are you will find it very difficult the stock standard jack that comes along i believe this is a legal requirement the triangles because it's a legal requirement in all the static regions but when you break down you need this and also when you cross over the border into these other static regions they're not just going to want you to have a sticker on the back of your car for a reflector i've had this issue before and i might be wrong but i've had situations where people want to get money out of me because i have a physical sticker on the car a white reflector and a yellow reflector instead of having the actual round reflector piece that comes out so there's my triangles and with chimneys i've seen this in all groups people park their chimneys on the street or somewhere they come out and they find their chimney on bricks or they find their uh, spare wheel stolen get yourself a decent set of uh, lock nuts and when you do this must never leave the vehicle this here the lock nut key must never ever leave the vehicle there's no point of it leaving it's it's a lock nut set specifically for this vehicle there won't be any reason to take it out even when you're taking your vehicle for service they'll make sure that you have this otherwise they'll send you back home to go and get it and then come back with it so that they can actually work on your vehicle and check everything that brings us to the next part over here we're going to ignore everything that's in that box it's just some tools i got back uh gadgets here at fe builds we've got a lot of gadgets that we like to play with um this over here is a diagnostic tool and it's a relatively inexpensive diagnostic tool uh, granted it's not as cheap as the ones you buy and take a lot that uh, cost you like 100 200 rands but uh, just a, a nice warning concerning those that you buy and take a lot for 100 200 rands um, oftentimes it will tell you on the packaging or the advertising what's what chipsets and what stuff is used in those um, bluetooth uh, dongles or cable dongles that you connect to your laptop and then scan but uh, both me and my brother are very tech guys and uh, we actually opened up quite a few of those to see if what the branding and the advertising claims is actually inside the product and I'm sure some of you have heard of the ELM, uh, I think it's three something uh, chip that works in many vehicles and it's sold a lot and take a lot on different platforms. And uh, I've got nothing against take a lot, but against those cheap uh, dongles. They can mess up your car. They can mess up your, your ECU. It's always good to have something that's not the most expensive something that's affordable but something that you know when you plug in you're not going to damage your vehicle so this is a launch and uh there's videos of me using this on the way to hogsback on our hogsback adventure when uh this vehicle over here the power just cut out completely to a point where i couldn't even drive up hills and the chimney wasn't loaded and uh the reason that happened is there's a small tool up front. Sorry, my chimney is so messy from the last outing because we're going out again tomorrow. You see that pedal boost over there? Right there? If you kick the wire by accident where it connects in and there's a issue with the joint, it's going to throw up an error. And this happens, doesn't happen all the time you kick the wire, all the time there's a bit of looseness on the joint. But it's going to kick up an error and uh, that's to do with the throttle positioning and uh, once that error that specific error comes up i'll put a link in the description to where we face that once that specific error comes in a one hour trip easily becomes a seven hour trip if you don't have this 
to reset the system and to cancel that fault of the of the system. Now let's get to the interesting part. This is interesting in my mind. Um, and then we'll go to the pump. Okay, so this is a spade, right? It's supposed to be a spade, but it's not just a spade. That is another tool that you don't need. This is for RCs. This spade is really solid. Usually these spades that break up into different pieces are not that good, not that great. I've had some bad experiences with them, but that's the, the cheaper level of, of them. This one was a bit more pricey, but not very pricey. So it was like under, under 1,500 grand. But I bought it from 4x4 Mega World. It's the hardcore uh, life without limits uh, spade. I don't know what specific model it is, but you'll be surprised what comes in here. So in here, you've got the spade itself. And that spade at the end is quite interesting. I'll just quickly take it out to show you. Yeah. So it's a spade. It's a saw. It's a spanner. It's a bottle opener and it's also some kind of an axe it's quite heavy it's quite heavy and also the handles are quite rigid so it's like they're, they're strong once you connect them in they hold so you can take a smack and they're still going to be good there's extender kits for the handles that's not it it's not just a spade like i said Another extender piece, and in here is some extra pieces that form part of this spade. So when you buy a spade, you're not just buying a spade, you're buying a whole toolkit along with that. So here's another saw that you can just connect directly if you don't use the, the whole spade itself to cut trees or logs in the way you can use this, or to cut small logs, you can use this. And this piece over here looks interesting. The points are sharp at the end. You can take off the spade tip and you can connect this at the end of the, the spade rod, which is a very strong rod, becomes like a spear. And you can do spear fishing in case you forgot your fishing rod at home. Plus the spade also comes with these spanners, which I've already got, basically got all of them already. And that basically sums it up for what comes in this spade section. Now I'm quickly going to move over to the one side of the vehicle and show you which pump I've got. And um, you don't have to have such a big pump as mine, but uh, it's helpful to have that pump. Um, that's 160 liter per minute. Um, the only reason I have that and I haven't actually mounted it on the vehicle is... i should just show you from here. The only reason I have that and I haven't mounted it in the vehicle is it's a one pump fits all for any vehicle on a drive. So when I go out, I just transfer the stuff over into the next vehicle and it's not hard to transfer all this stuff. Right now it looks like a mess because I've unpacked it all, but uh, it's not that much. In terms of tools, I've got some other stuff over here. Look, this is a last minute resort. Um, this is like a last of last minute resort. If you don't have a tire repair kit, which I do have over here and I remember just now that I need to show you. Uh, but if you don't, or if you're in a dangerous spot and uh, it's worth taking all the hassle to clean up your tire after you finish, then you can quickly use this to inflate fast and get to a gas station where it's safe. And then it'll be a big cleanup job after you finish, but uh, arrive alive, right? And then there's a lot of extra stuff I have in here that I just haven't unpacked from when I bought the Jimny. Um, I've never used. This piece over here is not really for the Jimny, it's for other vehicles. But I keep it in my Jimny because um, I work on other vehicles whenever I travel around. And uh, normally in the family, I'm the guy who gets delegated the task of getting the vehicle running while everyone goes to eat food and enjoy life. 
I bought one of these small Suzuki medical pouches. It's very nice. It's got some small plasters. It's a nice, cute little uh, medical thing. Uh, I bought it just to support the Suzuki local uh, service station um, on this side because they were nice to me that day and they serviced my car well. But um, you'll need a bit more than what comes in here. Um, I've got all that under in the section, the trunk that we made over here with the recovery gear. So what comes in this specific uh, tool bag? I think this will help you out for minor injuries and minor things. Yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's very basic, very, very basic. This is like, you know, if you fall in your garden, then you you want to you want to patch up a, a scar or something and use this. But then we've got uh, quite an extensive uh, medical bag, and uh, not just I have it, but uh, all my family members who drive long distance in the convoys all have their own uh, because we've had issues. There's no better teacher than life experience. Not YouTube. YouTube is YouTube is good. Um, but like, for instance, you're watching this video on YouTube. I'm showing you what I've needed for my life experience. Your life experience might be different. You might not need all this stuff. You might not need a Mastercraft set. Maybe you can get away with just buying one uh, toolkit for Midas. You might not need this because you might just have roadside assistance and you have time to wait for them to come. And then uh, you can just tell them on the phone, bring a OBD tool with you. Um, by the way, that spade that I showed you also has a point that's a pick. And I haven't explained the spade in its fullness because it's also got a fire lighter on it. Um, somewhere somewhere in here, I believe it's on, on one of these sections. It's got a fire lighter. Oh yeah, and that's the... If you flip your car over or you go into a river and you're stuck... That's the point there that you use to break your, your window. I think there's a way that you load it to something and then you just release it and then, yeah, break your window open. Get out of your vehicle. Get locked in your vehicle. But then, then again, don't just go break your river. Don't just go break your window if you are completely submerged underwater. There's a process to that. I would advise you take a course on that if you're doing any serious, serious, hectic kind of driving where you'll end up fully submerged in a vehicle underwater. Uh, there's some good tips out there that will help you to, to get out of a vehicle in that situation. So now it looks like a mess. I'm going to pack this all up and then uh, let's go and look at my 4x4 recovery gear. And then I'll show you a bit more stuff that I have that's quite handy. You see up there in the center console, just behind the Garmin Overlander, there's a knife that always stays there. The reason that knife stays there is, actually I'll say, anyone who's rolled a vehicle before and has gotten stuck in this, the vehicle and they're unable to release the seatbelt because their weight is on the, the, the seatbelt uh, uh, lock, They'll know why that knife is there. So you roll the vehicle, you can't get your seatbelt off. That knife is sharp enough, the one right behind the, you can actually see a bit of it over there. It's sharp enough to cut your seatbelt loose and get out of there. So if the car's upside down, you suspend it upside down, you can just use that knife, cut the seatbelt, get out. And uh, you can use a tool like the one I just showed you over here to break the window and to get through. Very nice tool to have. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's go into the recovery gear. So as we get into recovery gear, here's a complete tire trunk to repair kit. I've never had to use it when running the BFGs. Hopefully I'll never have to use it when running the Radar Renegade. I am a bit OCD, so I carry a bottle of Dot4 oil because yeah, I'm not that old, not as old as other people who drive around in Overland, but uh, yeah, I've had uh, quite a few 
life experiences, including, uh, you know, being resuscitated in the hospital quite a few times. So um, I've learned a few things along the way. And uh, I've also cut brake lines before, ended up out there and then no brakes. So I have the stuff to fix the brakes and to continue going, reach my destination without costing me an arm and a leg. Behind that chair over there, in that pouch, I don't need to show you, I've got a bottle of distilled water for the battery and also for the uh, radiator. Some people say just put ordinary tap water into the radiator when it leaks. But after you do that, you're gonna have to flush out the whole radiator system because you will put impurities and stuff in there and then you'll get to a stage where your thermostat is not opening. So in there, I've got a distilled water. I've got two pints of oil, engine oil, uh, just in case I break something and engine oil leaks out. Or if the car starts burning engine oil, there's enough in there to get me back to base. In uh, the center console over there, I have a few more tools, but those are not really necessary, not really needed in this video. Um, and now let's get on to the recovery gear. Okay, so when talking about recovery gear, I also want to cover the next thing that um, that I have on my list. In this bag, there's uh, some strap downs. You know, all the ropes and stuff you need and uh, that ratchet piece, I forget the name of it now. But there's also two fire extinguishers over here. I hate this stuff because you have to service it every year. This one's a bit better, but it's a pressurized container. And if your car is going to be parked in hot sun for a long time, I don't think it's the best to have in your car. And let's look at the recovery gear I carry. So we'll start on this side, then go to that side. Number one, end deflate. This is a two tire end deflate. I got it on Black Friday. I've got it for a fraction of the price. This right here is a very heavy recovery kit that I got from Iron Man. This will work much better in that car, not in a chimney. I think it's overkill for a chimney. Um, this should pull like maybe three, four tons uh, in it, you know, so it's very heavy. Um, but yeah, I carry it in the chimney anyways, because um, you never know what uh, car you'll have to pull out of the mud. Because apparently chimneys are pulling cars out of the mud now. You don't need that, that's just a part that I carry around with me um, that I haven't fitted yet. But over here. You can see my Desert Products Natural. Uh, special thanks to Rudy. Um, who's uh, a brand ambassador over there and uh, he sold me all this stuff for very cheap. On the other side, I've got some of the recovery uh, gear that I use. And uh, just quickly put this all back, including the inflate, otherwise it will stay out and then get damaged. Just all back. In this car, I don't need the back seats because it's a toy. So whenever I go out riding, I'm either with one person or myself in this car. When I go in a car like that one or one outside, there's a whole family there. So what is this over here? Let's just see. Oh yeah, these are spare uh, parts that I carry along with me. These hold the anti anti sway bar or anti roll bar or, or stabilizer bar in place on the car i've had a situation before where these have broken off in this car i think i was on about 10,000 k's when that happened these broke off at high speed at 120 and i had to panel beat the old one until these arrived so i realized since it takes at least a month to six months for it to come uh, might as well order a few and just keep them in the car this here is very important, especially if you're alone and you need to winch yourself out. Snatch block. Like a pulley system, doubles the ability of your winch, or just helps the ability of your winch. This part over here 
goes hand in hand with my uh, 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 snatch block um, and uh, snatch uh, strap and uh, it's also nice to put around trees when you want to winch off a tree without damaging the tree. Like I said, I've got an emer emergency medical kit. Uh, this has everything from sorting anything from third degree burns all the way through to um, yeah, injuries on site. Then over here, I'll just take this out of the pack. it these are very nice to have I've got two of these um, it's advisable not to buy the ones made in China this one here says it's got a breaking strength of 30,000 pounds yeah let's see let's see about that it would be quite interesting to see But anyways, I was recommended to get this when uh, I was still new in the 4x4 um, game. And uh, I trust the person who recommended them, so he uses them on his huge Toyota Hilux. Which, uh, yeah, weighs, uh, a, weighs a ton because he carries his whole house on that Hilux carries everything he needs to survive an apocalypse or Armageddon in his Hilux. And that's pretty much what I've got, what I've needed, what I've never had to use really, um, because this chimney doesn't really get stuck. But I'm hoping I'm not talking too, too soon, because uh, we've had situations where we've desperately tried the whole day from morning to night to try and get this thing stuck so that we can practice recovery and uh nope it just went through even open diff it just went through maybe it was the tires i had on maybe it was the suspension maybe it was just the grounds we were on maybe it was just the conditions but uh i'm going to try again this weekend to get it stuck and i think the best way to do that is just to ground the vehicle Make sure the belly sits on the ground and then recover it from there. So that's basically my recovery gear. And uh, yeah, it helps to also have the service manual of the vehicle in the cubbyhole. And up there, you can see I've got a Garmin Overlander. Very, very helpful. Along with some other tools that Garmin sells. Can help you out of a tricky situation. Also, it's one of those GPSs that records your route as you're driving out. I'm a, I'm a person who likes to explore, so if I get lost out there, like I did in Limpopo, you can actually backtrack all the way back to base camp. And up there, you can also see a radio. That's a UHF radio licensed on the 404 comms. It uh, is both a digital radio and analog radio. Uh, so it's like a DMR kit and... Uh, We've been experimenting with digital radio and it's just so awesome. I mean, it's either you have crystal clear signal or no signal at all. So that's worked quite a long range, long distance in built up areas. So you can imagine in open areas, it'll work well. It's a 25 watt radio. I think that's the limit that you can have in South Africa. Um, anything above that is technically illegal. And then just a cloth to wipe the car. Um, if you need to okay so we went through the main tools and uh the recovery gear and just to wrap up this video there's some extra tools that i have a long nose pliers there's a flat nose pliers somewhere out there um uh, that flat nose pliers comes really in handy when you're pulling nails or bolts out of the tire and you want to patch it up and fix it long nose uh pliers really nice for electrical work sometimes your fuse box doesn't have a fuse remover it will work it will help you also with wires and other things very handy tool i recommend having that in the car so much so that there's a backup one over here uh, 
This brand, I haven't really worked so much with it. Uh, I believe it's a grip, but it's a multi-function tool. It's also got a pliers in there and some small knives and stuff. Uh, but when I haven't worked with the brand so much, I get a bit nervous because I've snapped a few tools. And then uh, we've also got a multimeter in the car. Um, it's always good to have a multimeter. You never know when you'll need it. And you don't need to have a super big, fancy multimeter. You just need like a basic one. And this right here is a light that I like to carry. It's an Ironman uh, uh, light. It's powered by a lithium ion battery. And the nice thing about it, check this out. If this is metal, it's going to stick on. Okay, that's aluminium. I need to find a nice metal piece. There we go. So how that works is if you need to get under your car at night, or you need lights on the side of the car, and you don't have lights, uh, so there's a lithium battery inside that you can charge and it lasts quite a long time uh, left on. So you can be under your car, you can fix your car, finish at night, and then you'll still have battery left. The next thing is a knife. I've taken it out of its sheath, but this is a really nice knife. Uh, I don't really hunt so much or use this for combat, but this is a combat toothpick. It's a bit dirty. I've been using it for unboxing and also uh, unboxing stuff, products. That's why it's got some glue on, on the tip. Um, but it's a nice knife. Uh, I took it out of the sheath. This is really nice. If you need to cut something or wires or wood or trees or something, you just want to play around or carve something. This is nice. And then oftentimes I move away from the vehicles. I sometimes go walking, go hiking alone or go for a walk alone and uh, want to keep comms with the vehicle. I can carry this with me or in the other way around. Sometimes people want to stay at base camp and they need to stay in comms with me. I want to drive around in the vehicle and just explore the area. So that's a second radio. It's also a dual uh, digital and uh, analog radio. Um, and I believe that's five watts or something like that. I don't know, I haven't really looked into it, but uh, I like this one because you can even send messages on the digital channel. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, if there's anything else I can't remember right now, but uh, I think uh, having these things in the car quite useful and uh, they'll definitely help you that's a wrap for this video until next time cheers